The fatal shooting incident in Gaza involving three Israeli hostages has stirred widespread distress in Israel. The three hostages, who had emerged shirtless from a building bearing a makeshift white flag, were shot by Israeli forces, despite their apparent efforts to convey that they were unarmed. Lt. Gen. Herzi Halevi, the Israeli military chief of staff, acknowledged that the hostages had taken measures to signal their harmlessness, including removing their shirts to show they had no explosives. Nevertheless, they were shot in violation of the military's rules of engagement. The incident has prompted renewed calls for a temporary truce and a negotiation for the release of more hostages. Protests in Tel Aviv and appeals from hostage relatives urged the government to prioritize a hostage-for-prisoners deal with Hamas rather than continuing a full-scale offensive in Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, while expressing empathy for the families of the slain hostages, emphasized the necessity of maintaining military pressure as part of what he described as a war for our existence. Despite growing outrage, he affirmed that the air and ground campaigns would not be scaled back. The Israeli military's preliminary investigation revealed that the soldiers, operating in Shijay, Gaza City, were on high alert for potential ambushes by Hamas. The three hostages, waving a white flag, were initially perceived as a threat, leading to the fatal shooting of two and the injury of the third. The military later realized the men posed no threat and were, in fact, Israeli hostages who may have escaped or been abandoned by their captors. Critics, including Human Rights Watch, pointed to the incident as an example of Israel's failure to adequately protect civilians, emphasizing the need for investigations into similar cases involving Palestinian civilians. The three men killed were identified as Yodam Hayam, Alon Shamriz, and Samer Talalka. The incident has intensified the debate over Israel's approach in Gaza, with the government committed to ongoing military operations until Hamas is neutralized. Ceasefire negotiations and calls for the release of hostages continue amid the complex and volatile situation. The mistaken killings of three Israeli hostages in Gaza by the Israeli military on Friday have been widely condemned. Akram Adala from Gaza criticized Israel, stating, Israel kills even those who surrender and raise the white flag, framing it as a condemnation of the Israeli army. The victims were identified as Yodam Hayam, Alon Shamriz, and Samer Talalka. Yodam Hayam, 28, was a drummer in a heavy metal band, Purse 4, and was scheduled to perform at a Tel Aviv music festival on October 7. Alon Shamriz, 26, planned to study computer engineering at Sapir College and played basketball for the Shai Arhangjeb team. Samer Talalka, 24, worked at a chicken hatchery and was known for his love of motorcycling. He was from Hura, a town in southern Israel with a significant Bedouin Arab population. The incident has added to the anguish of families with loved ones still held by Hamas. Raz Benami, a former Israeli hostage released during a recent truce, had warned the government about the risks to hostages during the offensive. Over 240 Israelis and foreign nationals were abducted by Hamas on October 7, and roughly 1,200 people in Israel were killed in the subsequent assault. A temporary ceasefire in late November led to the release of some hostages, but the agreement collapsed in early December, resuming hostilities. The deaths of the three hostages in Shijay, northern Gaza, serve as a stark reminder of the ongoing risks faced by those still in captivity as Israel conducts airstrikes and a full-scale ground offensive against Hamas. The news article describes the tragic death of Samer Talalka, one of the three Israeli hostages mistakenly killed by Israeli forces in Gaza. Allah Talalka, Samer's cousin, expressed the profound shock and disbelief at the sudden killing, describing it as a recurring nightmare. Samer Talalka was abducted by Palestinian militants during the October 7 assault, and his family lost contact with him shortly afterward. 
The family was celebrating his mother's birthday when they received the devastating news of his death at the hands of Israeli soldiers in Gaza. The article highlights the personal stories of the three victims, shedding light on their aspirations and backgrounds. Yodam Hayam, a 28-year-old drummer in a heavy metal band, was set to perform at a Tel Aviv music festival. Alon Shamriz, 26, planned to study computer engineering at Sapir College and was a basketball player. Samer Talauka, 24, worked at a chicken hatchery and had a passion for motorcycling. Israeli leaders have stated that their military operation aims to both topple Hamas and free the more than 120 hostages in Gaza. However, families of hostages are advocating for a new deal to secure the release of captives promptly. The mistaken killings have intensified the calls for urgent action to bring back all hostages. The article also reports on the Israeli military's actions around Kamal Adwan Hospital in Beit Lahia, which was surrounded and raided for a week. The hospital staff and patients were forced to evacuate during the siege, and some were detained. The Israeli military claimed that the hospital was used by Hamas as a command and control center, a charge denied by Hamas and medical staff. The communication blackout in Gaza, the longest during the war, has left more than 2 million Palestinians virtually cut off from the outside world. The blackout, caused by Israeli attacks on telecommunication infrastructure, adds to the challenges faced by the population in the midst of the ongoing conflict. The article reports on the escalating tensions in the Red Sea, where the US and British militaries claim to have shot down more than a dozen attack drones. The Houthis, an armed group controlling northern Yemen, have been conducting drone and missile assaults on Israeli and American targets since the October 7 attacks led by Hamas. The Houthis aim to prevent Israeli ships from navigating the Red Sea until Israel ceases its war on Hamas. The shipping industry anticipates potential economic repercussions as the Red Sea, a crucial sea lane, becomes entangled in regional unrest. The U.S. Central Command stated that the USS Kearney successfully engaged 14 drones launched from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. No injuries or damage to ships were reported. The British warship HMS Diamond also shot down a suspected attack drone targeting merchant shipping in the Red Sea. The Houthi militia claimed to have launched attack drones toward the Israeli Red Sea port of Eilat, but this claim is unconfirmed by the Israeli military. The Houthis have previously targeted Eilat during the Gaza War, disrupting commercial shipping to the major port. In the past week, the Houthis attacked a Norwegian tanker and a ship operated by the Mediterranean Shipping Company. They also hijacked a commercial vessel, holding 25 crew members. The Houthis attribute their recent attacks to solidarity with the Palestinian people, protesting the killing, destruction, and siege in Gaza. The article also mentions the communication blackout in Gaza, the fifth since October 7, causing concerns about documenting human rights violations and the impact on civilians.